it's the best, worst idea ever. A portion of this episode is sponsored by Hover. Hit the link in the description for 10% off and stick around to find out more. There you are, welcome back. The Artillery Hornet was born on a live stream. We took it out of the box and we got it set up and, and power loss, that's right. For some reason, there was power loss. <laughs> Not some reason, it's because I, I have this little outlet strip back here. And that outlet strip is where I plugged it into and I leaned forward. I knocked the plug out. You big dummy. Never fear, we restarted the print. Guess what though? That power outage fried one of the stepper drivers. What? We had to go and find an old artillery X1 and cannibalize it. We took a stepper driver out of that, plugged it into this machine, got a print finished. In fact, it was this one and then we were good to go. Specs on the machine are as follows and of course I'm gonna need my pencil of pointing. It is 220 on the X, 220 on the Y, and 250 on the Z or Z. It takes 1.75 millimeter filament over there on that Titan extruder. It brings it through a to be patented special Bowden tube assembly down to the hot end and through a 0.4 millimeter brass nozzle. The build plate, tempered glass with a coating. There are oversized adjustment knobs on all four corners. Unfortunately, they were a little difficult to use. The website didn't necessarily list specs on the heat on the nozzle or the heat on the bed. However, through the menu, I was able to set the nozzle at 260C and through the menu, I was able to set the bed at 140C. 140C? What? In here, it's got two filament cooling fans. One right here, one right here. And in fact, inside here is an in-house developed 32-bit board that's running Marlin 2.0.7. Let's find out how it's connected. We've got a great look at the board right here. What's really interesting, all of the stepper drivers, those, are removable and replaceable, which came in extremely handy during the stream. One thing to check for is how power is connected. And the best way to do this is a crimped ferrule. In fact, my friend, Brian Vines, who is the king of puns on Twitter and has quite honestly, one of the most magnificent heads of hair. He did a video about ferrules. I'll put it in the description and I highly suggest you take a look at it. This is where power comes in. And you can tell the wires actually have a ferrule crimped into place before it's inserted into the block and the block is screwed down. Sometimes you'll see printers or machines that have tinned wires into these. That's better than bare wire, but not by much. Always consider crimping a ferrule onto your wires, especially in this case, right here. You wanna be safe with power, right? <laughs> You bet I asked about the firmware and Tracy over at Artillery, thankfully, was able to send it to me in a zip file in email. She also mentioned they were gonna have it posted on their website. But as of filming this video right here, it gave me a 404. There are belt tensioners on X and on Y, the X belt tensioner, uh, you can use your hands. Doesn't require tools. On the Y, you'll need an Allen key. We need to talk about the prints. Uh, it gets really interesting. One of the first prints I tried on this machine is this. This is the Vault of Asgard by Bugman 140. And you can tell it has issues. We'll call it issues. It was sitting here on this bench printing overnight. I checked it in the morning and I thought, that's strange. Why don't we print it again? I re-sliced it, this time in Prusa Slicer. And I swapped out the filament because I ran out of green. And it looks like this, much better. I uploaded a YouTube short and then very quickly took it down because the discussion wasn't exactly what I was aiming for. <laughs> but essentially what I did, I mean, look at those, look at these. This was done in Cura. This was done in Prusa Slicer. I, it's, what, what? It's not the slicer's fault. And through some investigation and thanks to Chris Russell, you know, as Krusty or practical printing, we were able to determine that the acceleration values in the machine baked into the firmware are a little fast. And when Prusa Slicer prints, 
it customizes those because I'm using an Ender 3 V2 profile in Prusa Slicer. So that's why this worked at Prusa Slicer. This didn't work in Cura. These tests are cool. These models are good, but I want to be more in control. I used an Idea Maker profile, downloaded from the Idea Maker profile directory online. Someone had made a nice one for the Hornet, and I was like, gimme. I started printing these chip cubes because I like a good chip cube. I think they turned out pretty good, pretty good. It's hard to tell in this blue filament because it's shimmery and reflective. With gray, you can see that, you, you, you can see a little bit better there. And while it's far from perfect, I would say, it's darn good, and it was time to get to printing. Baby needs a new pair of shoes. Yahtzee. I started out with some vase mode prints because, you know, why not? They look cool, and it did a good job. This is a vase by Clock Spring, and I, I love how it looks. I love how the lines are crisscrossing, and my, my brain can't make sense of the pattern. This was done in GST3D PLA+. In fact, we did this in... Uh, we did this in vase mode as well. Yep, this is an egg from Clock Spring, and uh, I just want to test whether the threads would be able to thread. It's crazy because these patterns actually give it some rigidity, even though it's a single wall thick. Vase mode's not the only thing we do. No, no, no. Look at that, it's a Benchy. In fact, Benchy just celebrated its anniversary recently. Happy anniversary, 3D Benchy. Where would we all be without you? But Benchy looks good. I think the bow looks good. It was calibrated by someone else and I downloaded a profile and I'm willing to bet if I had spent a lot of time just tweaking and tuning, which a lot of people like to do, I could have gotten even better. But for now, that's a fantastic result. What's that? Well, yeah, of course, of course we printed ourselves a mini Joel. Look at that. Look at the hair, the glasses, little arms, little hands, little feet, the winky eye and the crooked smile. There is a, a seam problem. I don't know if it's a problem, but I mean, that's a seam right there. That's a, that is a seam. And obviously slicer settings are what creates that. Tweaking and tuning would have minimized that or gotten rid of it altogether. But that is a mighty fine mini Joel. From there, I had to print Floalistics Chainmail and I used some Repcord PLA that I had laying around. And I think it looks great. It printed really well, 0.2 millimeter layers. I did have some issues with retraction, but what's interesting, this is a Bowden system. So typically you're looking at four to five millimeters of retraction at 35 to 40 millimeters per second speed, right? I did direct drive retraction settings with this. And I think it's because this handy dandy cable bundle, this integrated thing, I think it provides a stiffer filament path, which gives you the ability to do this with direct drive retraction settings. It's not bad, right? It's not bad. And it makes a cool hat. Finally, in the printing department, I need to tell you something. Kirimoto from Grid Space. It is a wonderful slicer. I just found out about this. I know it's been around a while. Sure, I'm late to the party, but I don't care. Kirimoto is a slicer that runs in a browser, but not in the cloud. It's browser-based, but runs locally on your machine. It's open source, 100% free, lightweight, easy to use. Oh, so cool. So this is the test model from Kirimoto. I'll put a link to Kirimoto down in the description, but honestly, like, go use it. And then through Kirimoto, I thought we should try PETG or PETG. I had some issues with PETG, not in the extrusion, but in the bed adhesion. And in fact, it wasn't until I slathered on a bunch of vision miners nanopolymer adhesive that it actually worked. But look, these kind of broke free right here. This one completed, looks good. It's in Green Gates PETG, or PETG, whatever you want to call it, but through Kirimoto. Again, I love it. So in the end, the Artillery Hornet is easy to assemble. It's well-built, rigid, it's easy to use. It's capable, highly capable. It's stylish in a Michael Bay's Transformers Bumblebee sort of way. The Artillery website has this machine for $249 US. Unfortunately, I just can't recommend this machine. I had this epiphany while I was doing some troubleshooting. It led me to my conclusion on this machine. One of the prints had failed. It was one of the Floalistic chain mails. I was you know, testing it and it had failed and I needed to access the hot end to clear a jam and I couldn't. This patent pending integrated cable carries the Bowden tube and the wires for the thermistor and the wires for the heater. 
This integrated cable must be connected at both ends in order for everything to work. How would you do a cold pull on this machine? How would you heat the hot end and then attempt to clear a blockage? How would you deal with a blockage in the PTFE tube in here? What if you had a car and the engine would only run when the hood was closed? If you opened up the hood of the car to troubleshoot the engine, you couldn't start the engine. Having the PTFE tube within the same bundle as the wires for the heater and the thermistor mean that this whole system has to be connected for everything to be able to power up. And if you need to access the hot end at all while it's powered on, you simply cannot. It doesn't work. You can't do it. It's unfortunate, right? This printer ticks a lot of boxes. It works pretty well. It's really yellow. I kind of like it. And it's built for people who want to be able to print things easily. This is it, except for this part. It's the best, worst idea ever. It's the best idea because it really cleans up the image, makes it look cool, install is quick and fast, just works, right? But then it's the worst idea. It's the worst idea because while the machine's working, it's great. But if you ever need to get in there and do anything, you can't. Artillery has this other machine. They're genius. And I've used it on the channel. It does a great job. It has the same build volume. It adds on, let's see, a filament runout sensor, power loss detection, a color touch screen, and it's got a volcano compatible hot end. But it's got those ribbon cables that are connecting things. No one likes those. I have this idea. I wanna, I wanna take the Hornet and the Genius, do that with it. So here's my plan. Artillery, this is for you. So from this machine, the Hornet, take the board, the wire routing that you've done around the machine, because that's really good, the extruder and the sturdy frame. From the Genius, take the hot end and the filament sensor. Lose this patent pending cable, and in fact, if you wanna keep a cable like this, just don't put the PTFE tube, don't put the Bowden tube through it. Don't, don't do that, don't marry those together because each of those are a separate system that need to be troubleshooted separately. And if you combine them, your car won't start. Have the Bowden tube separate and just have some cool 3D printed clips that clip it to this cable that will now just hold the electronics. And then you still have a clean machine. You have some added features. You've got a volcano compatible hot end. You've got filament runout detection, power loss recovery, a color touch screen. I think that's the solution. Hover is the sponsor for today. And let me tell you why that's so cool. Hover is a service that allows you to register a custom domain and email address. This is important for a lot of you out there. Right now, people in 3D printing are finding new revenue streams through content they create or products they can sell. Now, I've seen these people advertise via Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, or Gumroad. And I've also seen listings uh, via a link tree. What you do and what you create is unique and you should stand out, and that's where a custom domain and email address comes in. Through Hover, you can register yourself a custom domain, and they have over 400 new domain extensions to really personalize what you want. Plus, through Hover, you can get yourself a custom email address, so when people email you back about your product, service, or content, they're not replying to a Hotmail or Gmail address, they're replying to your personal address, because it's yours, you're unique, so is your brand, and go through Hover to get yourself a domain and a custom email address. Right now, hover.com forward slash 3D Printing Nerd gets you 10% off. That's not too bad, right? Hover.com forward slash 3D Printing Nerd, 10% off. Well, those are my ideas. What are yours? I'd love to hear them down in the comments. This machine from Artillery was sent in for review. No money changed hands, and they don't get to see this video before I publish it. In fact, you're seeing it at the same time they are. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, practice kindness aggressively, and as always, high five.